Hello, everybody. My name is Jay Johnson. We're here at the um, we're at the sacristy in the, um, the church here at St. John's in Royal, Illinois. It's the 24th of October today. Um, we're going to uh, carry on from where we left off last week. We were talking about the the, uh, the prophet Samuel. I'd like to uh, preface my comments with a um, small illustration about um, something that happened. I was at a wedding. My uh, my cousin got married a few years ago, and they asked me to do the wedding. It was one of the uh, the churches where my family grew up, St. Peter's in uh, Glassford, Illinois, outside of Glassford. The service was, uh, we were going to have it on a, on a Saturday afternoon, and a Friday night we had a little practice, and <clears throat> there was a pianist that was there and a guitar player. The guitar player was going to sing, and the pianist was gonna, obviously going to play part of the uh, duet. So after they uh, they ran through the practice, uh, it was really impressive. So I went over and I asked. I said, um, I asked the uh, the guitar player. I said, How long did you practice that song before you before you caught on? He said, oh, A couple hours. That's about what it took. I said. Uh, so I turned to the pianist, who was um, was an older gentleman. He wasn't that old, but he was. I don't know. He was uh, probably forty five. I said, How? Um, I said, How long did it take you to to learn to play that? He said, about uh, 28 years. Yeah, that was great. You see, he didn't just learn that song. You see, the previous word <clears throat> that I asked the guitar player is, how long did you practice that? He only practiced it a couple of hours and he picked it up because it, it was a fairly simple tune. But to play it on the piano, the other guy looked at it from the long term because he knew what he had to go through to be prepared to get to that stage. So I preface this comment, these comments this, right now with that story because it takes a long time to do the will of God in the proper way. We can do things in an instant that are God's will, but to be a prophet, uh, in the case of Samuel, who we're going to be talking about, it was a long time. It was a long haul. Let me just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, may the, the words that uh, we consider today, not just myself who I, as I speak here, but those who listen, may they be very intentional about seeing what God's word has to say for them and to them and in their life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'd like you to turn to you, uh, if you would, you can hit the pause button, but uh, get your Bibles out. I'd like you to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to go through the first 13 verses. So hit the pause button if you want to, and then pick up uh, at this point. Okay, I'm going to review review for you this. We're going to be talking about Samuel today, but a few weeks ago on the 19th of September, we talked about Abraham and Isaac. Abraham prepared Isaac for the steps that Isaac would do. Then we talked about Moses prepared Joshua. And Moses was, it took him a long time, it took him 40 years in the desert just to get ready to serve. And then he served for another 40 years while he was leading the children of Israel out, uh, out of Egypt to the promised land. So that was 40, that was 80 years of listening intently. And then last week we talked about Eli. Eli, we, we reviewed the things that he had done wrong that did not go well, but he was given another opportunity to, to have a restart with the, the young boy Samuel. We know that Samuel got there to, uh, to be with Eli when he was about maybe three, four, five years of age. And, uh, and so Samuel was led by Eli, and it said, um, uh, the word that was said about Samuel, it said, and he let none of his words drop to the ground. In other words, he didn't let any of the words that the Lord wa wanted to use to instruct him to, to fail, to be forgotten. And so the text shows us that he was well-received, and it was attested that he was the prophet in Israel. So that's a, that's a long term. Well, today we're going to stretch that time of Samuel even longer. Uh, the text says that uh, uh, the text for today is about uh, Samuel and his response to go to uh, call and name and anoint David as the king of Israel. Now, this story takes place when Samuel is about 75 years of age. So we left off last week when he was just a boy, but the comment was made that as he as he developed, he became this he became known as the the prophet 
throughout uh, the country of Israel. So you see that sequence. It's like a it's like a relay race. Uh, it's like Abraham hands off to Isaac, I, Isaac hands off to Jacob, and Jacob to his children, and the children to one of them is Moses, and Moses to Aaron, or the, Moses to Joshua, then Joshua to the other judges, and finally it comes to it comes to Samuel, then Samuel hands off to David, and you get the idea. What's that got to do with us? Because I believe the whole idea of being a prophet, a speaker of truth, comes to each one of us as well. We are the ones responsible because we can't we can't drop the ball. We have to make sure it, it continues to be passed on. So before I begin this uh, this message in earnest, um, I'm going to ask you the question, and I want you to think about this. You can pause it if you want. I got three questions here. Who was the one that you learned from? Where, who was the person that you learned your spiritual responsibility from? What was it that you learned specifically? What were, what were the things that you learned, the, the attitudes, the actions, the principles? What were those? And what were the words that you were asked to pass on? Now, this may seem like a simple question, but I ask this because we're always in a state of review. It doesn't matter who you are, what profession you are, a, a brick maker, candlestick maker, you know, carpenter, anything. You're always reviewing in your head and in your person, what is it I need to do today? You don't forget, but you're always remembering the fine points that, you've, that have been shared with you, that you pass on, and undoubtedly, you will pass those on to yet the person that you train or the person that, who observes you. Now, those could be very good habits, very uh, positive habits and attitudes, or they could some, be something that you're probably not too proud of. Anyway, here's I'll just uh, start with the text. Here's what the text says. This is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his, sin, his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear of it and, about it and will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to, know, to, are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. God says this to, to Samuel. Verse 4 says, Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him, and they asked, do you come in peace? Uh, they had a good reason to be scared because Samuel had actually revoked this uh, the future possibility of king continuing to be uh, can his family continuing to be the kings of the nation. Saul knew that at some time in the future things were going to go south. Samuel said to him, um, "Yes, I have come in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come to sacrifice with me." Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, that was the oldest son, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands before the Lord now. But the Lord said to Samuel, no, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. But Jesse called Abinadab, and he came to pass before in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Then Jesse had Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are, there, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse said, and he is tending the sheep. We know who that was. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had 
that young boy David brought in. He was ruddy and of fine appearance and handsome features. And the Lord said, Rise up and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And Samuel went to Ramah. End of passage. I say these words because there's a pattern in there. You were probably not paying attention. But as I read that text, there was a, a common repetition. The Lord said, Samuel said, the Lord said, uh, Samuel said, the Lord said, Samuel replied. And then it says, uh, Samuel thought, the Lord said, Samuel said, you get the idea? He said, tell us. Whatever the Lord said, uh, it was given. The request was given. What should I do? The Lord said, I'll tell you what to do. And what the Lord said, Samuel listened and he obeyed. Samuel listened and he obeyed. Samuel listened and he obeyed. Several times just in this passage alone. Why do I say that? Because he had learned over the course, he probably served, he, he was in the service of the Lord from the age of about three or four or five. He was about 75 years old when this event took place, when he anointed David to be king. Which means Samuel was used to listening, listening, asking the questions, listening for the response, and then saying, not his words, but what the Lord had given him to say in obedience. I think that's a pattern for us. I'd like you to think about what is the pattern that you have in obedience. First of all, what does the Lord say to you? This is really important because some of us are, I mean, we're getting up in years. Some folks have been in the church for years, and some people still say, I, I don't know what to do. Really? Haven't you been picking some information up over these last decades? There's people that are fresh in the faith, new in the faith, and they hear things, they read, the, they hear the words of the Lord's, of the Lord's word, and they, they're pretty astute, and they go, does that apply to me? And my guess, uh, it would always be, yeah. If the Lord's moving your heart that way, that probably applies to you. So it says that, uh, so that, and through this passage, uh, David, is, excuse me, Samuel is continually being called to listen, to obey, to respond, to listen, to, to respond and obey time after time after time after time. I would say that it's a process. I think it's pretty obvious that for all of us, as we get older, we get wiser, hopefully. What does it mean to be wiser? It means to take the information that's been given to us, hold it, process it, use it, apply it. Remember that passage when we mentioned last week, it said, and Samuel didn't let any of his words drop to the ground. In other words, everything that Samuel took in it was applicable. He didn't drop anything. He kept all those things. He didn't have a book that he, that he held and he kept reading, although he did have God's word. He had, the, he had uh, parts of the Torah, the law. He knew that. That was something he could reference to, but he also had all this stuff that was, that was placed upon his heart. And he always had a task for, through all those years, he always had a task that he wanted Samuel to do. And that task Samuel would always, he would find out what the task was. He would inquire, sometimes, could you tell me why? And God would respond with either a word from a, a previously written text or a word directly to Samuel. Samuel knew what he had to do and he did it. Now, I don't think we have to go too far to see the stretch of when we hear what we need to do, we need to do it. I mentioned this passage uh, a couple weeks ago. I'd like to also mention today is from James chapter 4, verse 17. Pretty simple passage. It says, whatever it is that you know you should do, but fail to do it, you sin. If you know what you need to do, and you fail to do that, then you sin. Now, I know that I'm talking with Christians when I say this. 
But for those of those of you that might be listening, aren't quite sure what Christianity does or what it means or what the impact, we believe that God has directives for us. And when we when he tells us and indicates to us the things we need to do, yet we fail to do them, then we 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 uh, we sin against God. We sin against other people. If we are we know we're to do something specifically for people, a specific task. If we're to tell our children children that we love them because we do love them, they need to be told that. If we fail to do that, then what we, what we do is we forfeit the chance to have an impact on their life. We sin against them. Anyway, it goes on. It says, um, it says uh, in verse 6, uh, Jesse's oldest son Eliab was brought forth. And what did Samuel say? As Eliab was brought forth, he began to think, like typical individuals, typical humans, he stood before, it says, um, uh, Eliab, he saw Eliab stand there and he thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands before us. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Why would he mention that? I think it's pretty interesting, specifically, why does he mention his height? Because the previous king, King Saul, it says in chapter 9, verse 2, it says Saul was chosen and he was a full head taller than everyone else in the land. He was, a, he was ginormous. He was really tall. It said he was very handsome. He was a very striking figure. People were impressed. But you know, it's not what's really impressed. It's, it's not the outer appearance that impresses, impresses God. And ultimately, it's not the outer appearance that impresses us. He said, I have rejected this Eliab, but the Lord looks not at the outer appearance, but at the heart. We mentioned a number of times, God reads the heart. He's not only, he not only reads what's going on at that moment, he knows what has gone in the heart before, and he knows what's going to happen in the heart in the future. God already knows that. So he wants to put the best individual, the best woman, the best man, in the best position because he wants the best to be accomplished. Not just for eye candy, not just somebody to be window dressing, not just somebody that looks nice, but somebody has the heart for the Lord. Eventually, it says in verse 12 that David shows up. This is what the text says. So David was sent for and they brought him in. He was ruddy, meaning he was probably red-haired, had a fine hair appearance and handsome features. And the Lord said, rise up, and anoint him. He is the one. Now look at this phrase. This comes in verse 13. So Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. How many brothers did he have that were um, that passed before uh, David was chosen? Seven. From the oldest down to the youngest, who was, which was David. Now that was not typical. That was kind of against the grain. That's not what was, what was expected. Samuel was caught up in that same thing because he just assumed this, that Eliab would, because he, he had this great appearance, he was king material. God said no. I'm encouraging all of us not to be caught up in thinking in the, in the common ways that humans do, but think what would God have? Allow us to see with patience who are the individuals before us? What might they offer? We can't tell. It will take time. The last part of this verse says this. And from that day on, after he was anointed in the presence of his brothers, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. That's huge. Because that sets the tone right there because we see and we obviously know that David moves on from there, and it's years before he actually becomes king. Probably could be another 15 to 20 years before David becomes king. But it's been put into his mind, and it's been put into the minds of his family. This man, this man, this, this young man has a destiny, ordained and approved by God. I would like you to realize we have been called, approved, and set in place to carry out those tasks. We have a baptism today for a, a little boy. 
by God's grace, this young man is being touched by the Spirit of God. And our prayer is that as God reads his heart and knows his heart and indicates what could happen, this boy will grow and his family and those around him. And as a result, the entire church will know. Why do I say that? What's the last, the last phrase in this, uh, the last sentence in this, this reading says, Samuel then went to Ramah, which means he disappeared, he walked out of the picture. Now from this point on, the focus belongs on David. Samuel's still going to hang around. He's going to be around for another, who knows, 10, 15 years. We're not sure, but he hangs around quite a while still. But from this point on, David has the understanding that he is being called. It's been laid upon his shoulders. The mantle of authority has been given to him. He's to rise up. So what do I say? How do I conclude this? I believe that all of us have a role yet to play, every single one of us, to the day that we pass. To the day that we pass and we lay those things on the hearts of people, people need to see what our actions are. And it is very important for each one of us to know who it was that taught us, specifically what they taught us, specifically what were the words they taught us, and that we can instruct those to those that follow. I know that not everybody feels they're a prophet, but the idea of, of playing the role of a prophet means to say the words that need to be said. And brothers and sisters, you and I, all of us, anybody that carries the title of Christian is called upon to share those words about Jesus with others. So thanks for coming. We'll be talking to you next week. Um, some more good stories, some more indications from the Old Testament. Blessings to you. Uh, take care. Bye now.